Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. I'm Tova and today I have a holiday project for you. I'm going to show you how to make your own Christmas tree skirt. I'll cover how to make a custom pattern and then how to sew your tree skirt together. For my demonstration, I'll be using a beautiful home decorating fabric. The link will be in the description. But you can use almost any woven fabric of your choice or even use two and make it reversible. Complete your holiday decorations with this tree skirt. Let's go ahead and get started. Here are the items I'm going to be using for this project. Now, because I'm doing both the pattern and I'm also doing the tree skirt assembly, I need an array of items to help me with both sides. So for the pattern, I'm going to be using some pattern paper, or you can use some large sheets of paper, a ruler, a pencil. Now, I'm going to be using a marker so it's easier to see my lines, but you definitely want to use a pencil with an eraser. You need some tape just to tape your paper down, a flexible tape measure, and then some paper scissors. For the assembly, I have my fabric here. So for each of these, I got a yard and a quarter. I have some flat batting here, or you can use some fleece. I have my contrasting fabric and my main fabric. Now, if you wanna use the same fabric for both sides of the tree skirt, you can just make this two and a half yards instead of a yard and a quarter for each. And again, the batting's also a yard and a quarter. I have my pins and needles here some all-purpose thread, some ribbon. My ribbon is an inch and a half, but you can really use any size ribbon that you want. You're gonna need about three to four yards of that ribbon. I have my fabric scissors, fabric marker, and then I have some fabric basting spray. Because this pattern can end up quite large, I'm gonna draw a smaller scaled version of it just so we're able to see everything. But I'll tell you what measurements you need to use in order to create one of a bigger size. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tape down my pattern paper. And for this part, you may wanna grab a yardstick since it's a little bit longer. So on the edge of my paper, I'm going to draw a straight line across that's gonna be 42 inches in length. Next, you're gonna mark the center of the line. So if I was to measure from this end over 21 inches, that's where you make your mark. Now from this point, you're gonna draw another straight line that's perpendicular to this line you're gonna go up 21 inches. On each of these three lines, you're gonna measure from the center point two and a half inches. So from this point, measure up two and a half inches, make a mark, from here two and a half inches, make a mark, and then from here two and a half inches and make a mark. So this is creating the circle cutout that we have in the center of the tree skirt. Now, once we finish sewing it and we have our quarter inch seam allowance, the diameter of the circle cutout is five and a half inches. If you wanna make it smaller, you just bring these points in a little bit closer to the center, or if you need to make it larger, then you just do the opposite and you can extend these points further out. Connect these three points into a smooth curve like you can see here. Now, if you need help filling in these areas to create your curve, grab your ruler. From this point, you're measuring out two and a half inches and you're making a mark two and a half inches, make a mark, and just keep doing that until you have a bunch of marks that you can then connect into a single curve. The last thing you need to do is connect the end of this line with the end of this line, and then with the end of this line. You're gonna have a smooth curve here, just like you did here, it's just a larger version. So what you're really ending up with is a half circle with a smaller half circle here in the middle. Now, because these points are kind of far apart, especially if you're doing a large scale version of this, it makes it kind of hard to fill it in. So you're gonna do exactly what you did down here. I like to use my flexible tape measure and I match up this corner with the center. I go out my 21 inches because it needs to be the same length as this line is and this line from the center point right here. So I measure out 21 inches and make a mark. Then I can move it here, 21 inches, make a mark. 21 inches make a mark until I have enough marks that I could fill it in and then I just do the same thing on this side as well. When you cut out your pattern, it's gonna look something like this. I could go ahead and finish putting in my information. Christmas tree skirt, cut one in fabric, cut one in contrasting fabric. Unless you wanna use the same fabric on both sides, then you can just not put this and put cut two in your fabric. Down here, we have cut on fold. So you're basically gonna fold your fabric in half 
this edge goes on the fold and you're going to cut along this curved edge here and then this inner edge right here. Because we cut out our fabric on the fold here, when I open up my fabric, I'll end up with a full circle and a smaller circle in the center. Now, before I go ahead and remove my pattern from my fabric, on one side, I'm gonna go ahead and cut right down the center where this fold is. So I'm just gonna grab my scissors and cut like this. So it's right on that fold. And this area is going to be the slit that's going to be at the back of our tree skirt. Next, lay your batting out on a flat surface. Now you can use a cotton batting, a polyester batting, a fleece type batting. I just, I'm using something very thin. You just wanna add a little bit of body to our tree skirt, but you don't wanna make it really thick. I'm laying it on a flat surface and you're gonna take Whatever circle that you wanna to designate to be the bottom of the tree skirt, that's the one you're going to use. And you can see this just has a slit on the one side, the side it's still connected. And we're gonna attach our batting to the wrong side of our tree skirt circle that's gonna be on the bottom. So what I like to do is I use my fabric basting spray. I spray my batting. And you may wanna do this a little bit at a time instead of trying to do your whole batting since it is fairly large. And then you're carefully going to lay it and just try to smooth out the circle best you can so you don't end up with any weird wrinkles or creases. And if you have a, a fold line here, you can go ahead and press this beforehand. So the spray basing will have it stick and then you can go ahead and cut out your batting so it's going to be the same size as this bottom layer. Also, don't forget to cut out the slit in the batting and also to cut out this inner circle here. Now you're gonna grab the part of the tree skirt that you would consider to be the top. So I'm gonna use this really pretty fabric here. You can see I have my full circle, small circle, and on one side, I have my slit. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my ribbon. Now I'm gonna cut four pieces of ribbon and they're gonna be at least 15 inches in length, but you can also go a little bit longer just in case and always trim it later after your skirt is complete. Now I'm still working in a smaller version here just so you can see the whole thing, but we're just gonna pretend this is a full size version of my tree skirt. So from the top at the slit, I'm gonna measure over four inches and I'm gonna take my ribbon and I'm gonna pin it to the edge here. And you're gonna make sure that the raw edges of the ribbon match up with the raw edge of your fabric. Then I'm gonna grab another ribbon. I'm gonna measure four inches from the bottom and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, pin your ribbon. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So there's gonna be two ribbons on this slit and two ribbons on this slit as well. You're gonna pin them because we're gonna baste them into place. Now, if you're using skinnier ribbon than I am, there's a ribbon I'm using for my main tree skirt is one and a half inches. Two works pretty well for me, but if your ribbon is skinnier, you can always add as many ribbons as you want and space them as you want. I would recommend though that you leave a decent gap in between your ribbon because this is where we're gonna turn our tree skirt inside out. And I like to have at least five to six inches between the ribbon. So I have plenty of room to reach my hand in there, turn it inside out and not worry about there being a ribbon there. Now, another thing which is optional if you want to have a ruffle around the perimeter of your skirt, you can do it at this point as well. Let me just grab my ribbon to get it out of the way. So let's say I want to add a ruffly ribbon. At this point, you would take your ruffle, and this is just a little scrap that I have, but we'll pretend it could go around the whole thing. And you can start placing it on the right side of your circle. Here's the wrong side, so it's on the right side. And I'm just gonna baste it around this perimeter so that the top of the ribbon or this lace lines up with the raw edge. And the main part of my lace is going towards the center. This way, when the whole thing gets flipped out, it's gonna end up like this. So if this is what I wanna do, I would just pin it around. And when I baste my ribbon into place, I can go ahead and baste the lace as well around the outside. I would do your basting stitch at the quarter inch seam allowance. My ribbon isn't very big, so it doesn't take me very long, just a couple of stitches. And this is just really a temporary stitch just to hold everything into place before everything gets stitched down permanently. Now 
We're now gonna take the two sides, top and bottom of our tree skirt and place them together. So this is the bottom, it has the batting on the wrong side. I'm gonna place it so it's right side up. Then I'm gonna take this other one with the ribbons basted in and I'm gonna flip it so it's now right side to right side. Now you need to make sure that these ribbons don't get caught in any of your seams. So I'm just gonna kind of fold them up and place them on the inside so they're not getting caught down here, over here, or in here. We're just gonna kinda try to keep them out of the way as best we can. And then I'm gonna start pinning so everything is lined up and you wanna make sure that you have your slits on the same side. At this point, my pieces are pinned together, but you'll notice that I have these X's right here. So this is the gap that I'm leaving open when I'm actually doing my seam, so that I'm able to flip it out in this area here, turn everything right side out. So this is the pattern that I'm gonna stitch in. I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna do my back stitching, stitch down, stitch the outer curve, come up on this side, do the inner curve, stitch down and then stop here and do my back stitching. So there are gonna be no stitches between these two X's. I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. When it comes to corners like the one I'm coming up to, I'm gonna stop when I get close to a quarter of an inch away, about right there, put my needle in, lift my foot, and then I'm just gonna rotate this, put the foot down and then continue sewing. Any corners you have, you're gonna go ahead and trim those off. Just be careful you don't actually cut into your stitches. And for this inner curve, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some notches so that our curve is gonna lie a little bit flatter once we turn everything wrong side out. And you can go ahead and do that now through this opening. You're gonna go ahead, reach in, and turn your whole tree skirt right side out. After it's completely flipped right side out, I would go ahead and press the whole thing just so it looks a little bit nicer. Where you had your opening, you're gonna go ahead and pin it close. So you just tuck in each side a quarter of an inch, just like the seam allowance, and then you just pin it, and we'll get a little bit closer because we're next gonna slip stitch this area. Grab a hand needle and some thread. Use a matching color. I'm gonna go ahead and use red so it stands out a little bit more. And you can see I have two sides. I have this side, and then I have this side over here. So I'm gonna start on this side. I'm just gonna grab a little bit on the inside and go towards the fold line and pull this all the way through. That way my knot gets tucked on the inside there. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit on the opposite side. And you wanna make your stitches fairly small. Pull it all the way through. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit on the first side that I started with. So I'm basically just going between the two sides and every time I pull it through, just pull it gently and you'll see that it'll start to close. Now you can see my red thread right there, but if you use a matching color, it's not gonna show up at all. So I'm gonna go back to the second side, just grab a little bit, and gently pull it as I go. So I'm gonna do this until this opening is closed. Lastly, you're going to top stitch around all the edges. So just like we did before, you're gonna go across here, around the whole thing, across the straight edge, and then the inner circle ending back where you started. With the top stitch, I'm gonna sew right along that edge. You don't wanna get too close, but I would say about an eighth of an inch away. And just take your time going around the curves. Now I'm using a decorative stitch for my top stitch. I have a metallic thread in my top thread. I'm still using regular all-purpose in my bobbin. Just want the top to have a little bit something extra, which is why I'm using it. Here you can see my final version of my tree skirt. So this is the full size. Now if you use two different fabrics like I did, it's reversible, you can have fun flipping it back and forth. And if you make one of our tree skirts, please send us a picture because we'd love to see how it turned out. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. 
Thanks for watching.